might be saying, what is a blog? Mm -hmm. And basically, a blog is just a short form for web blog. And it's like um, a journal posted on a website. It contain news, opinions, ideas, pictures, or whatever. And it's updated on a regu regular basis. And it's a, it's a form of online communication that allows businesses of all sizes to uh, promote their message and uh, to get a, a following, so to speak. So there's many ways that blogging can help your business. For starters, if you're just starting out and having your own website isn't in the budget at this time, a blog can be an inexpensive alternative way of getting your message out there. But even if you have a website, a blog can be a great add-on because it is something that you can update on a regular basis, which is going to encourage people to come back and, and check it out and see, well, what's new there? And by updating regularly, it's not only encouraging individuals to come and visit your site, but the search engines love that. Every time you put something new, they come back and, and it's all factored in. As well, every single posting that you make is more stuff for the search engines to find. So those are, that's part of the benefits. But at the same time, you can use your blogs to uh, position yourself as an expert in your industry by uh, writing articles about uh, what you do, because generally speaking, your website is mostly about your company and, and your products or your services. And you might have one page that, you know, okay, this is me and this is what I, my background and that's why I'm qualified to do what I do. And some people even have maybe a few tips or articles on their website. But a blog can go over and above that by allowing you to continually put out information. So if you um, I mean, I'm looking around the room, and I know most of you, and I can think right away of what would be great for a blog. Like, Dave, I know you, you, have, you work for a company, but um, aside from that, whether they would allow you to do this, but you could blog about the new products that are coming out. You're always sharing that information with us. But if you can at the same time post it, then we can go back and say, well, what's that he was telling us about? And even draw more people to, to you than, than know. Um, if you're a computer person like um, Brian or Bill, then you could post tips or articles. And if you're not a writer, you don't necessarily have to always be writing either. You can um, either just you can link to other articles that you've read with just your, your insightful comments about them. Or if you, you really want to just I shouldn't say take the lazy way out, but I have um, a client who, she wants a blog, she wants to provide some good information for her clients, but she doesn't want to write the articles because uh, that's not what she wants to do with her time. So instead, she posts articles that other people have written that are related to her area of expertise. Being careful, you know, not, not her direct competition, of course, but just other people who are knowledgeable about what she does. The other way that uh, blogging can help your business is by, um, by it as, uh, encourages communication with the audience as opposed to uh, just having the information there. Most of the time a blog is set up so that people who, who uh, visit it can leave a comment and if that people can do that, it makes them feel more engaged. It also allows them, if they have a blog as well, that they can, when they sign the comment, leave a link back to their blog. So it's all forming a community. And um, I'll just share a little bit of a story. Um, one of the blogs that I recently visited was uh, the, the person had been uh, tagged by another blogger who was doing something was called the Ultimate Guide to Productivity. He was challenging people to post their best productivity tip and, and you would link it back to this thing. So they're all linked. So I participated in that 
Oh, that's not even the one I was going to talk about. It was a different one, sorry. Um, another professional organizer I know uh, did an entry on her, her desk with a picture of her desk. And it's like, here's the organizer's desk. And she had been challenged by someone else to do that. So I thought, hey, I can do that. And I did the same thing. Well, somebody saw that. And now they've challenged me to take part in something they're doing, which is show us your planner. You know, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Kind of thing. And now this is somebody that I've never heard of before, that would never have heard of me. And it's all just getting your name out there. And it's fun. I read that about your, about your desk, and I saw the pictures. Oh, you did? Yeah. OK, well, that's great. See, people sitting in. I didn't know she'd been there. She didn't leave a comment. <laughs> If you've decided that you'd like the blog and you want to get started, uh, there's different ways that you can do it. You can either have it hosted on your website, and if you um, if you have your hosting with Dr. PC, all except for the very beginning package, it has blogging software in there that's included. It's very easy to set up. You would just probably need. Um, Marie or myself to customize it to, to match the look and feel of your website, unless you don't really care what it looks like, because there's only two designs to choose from. The other option is to use a web, uh, a blogging site that hosts it on their site. The advantage is, is um, that it requires a little bit less uh, technical expertise. They offer you more designs to choose from. But because it's not part of your website, you're going to get from it. You're going to link. You'll have like, here's my website, here's a link to my blog, and, and your blog is a link to your website. But that's only one link coming into your website as opposed to lots and lots when you've got all the entries. So, um, so there's advantages and disadvantages to both. But uh, what you want to do is, before you get started, is figure out what are your objectives. Who are you trying to reach? And um, what can you write about that's going to attract their attention? Do you want to um, do you want to give advice? Do you want to um, make your comments on different trends that are happening in the industry or in society in general? Um, just sort of decide on your focus um, and how that you can attract the people that you're trying to uh, get known by. And once it's set up, you're ready to just start posting your thoughts, your ideas, your observations. And as I said, you don't necessarily have to be original. You can, you can um, just link to some other, like sometimes people will just put, let's say they've read an article somewhere that they think would be useful, just put the introductory paragraph and then link to where the rest of the article is somewhere else. And you're still sharing the information and without having to do a whole lot of work. Um, now if you don't, if you like the idea of a blog and you really just don't, that you don't feel like doing it, um, you, can, you can always get someone to do that for you too. So it, blogging software is easy to use. If you can send email, you can, you can, you can operate a blog. But I do have one client that she never touches it. I don't even know if she looks at it. It's, her name is on it, but I do all the work for it. So it can be done either way. Another option, if you are part of a group, is to have a multi, multiple authors so that in, you, each are listed. So it'll show people in the entry. And um, there's one, actually, in addition to my own blog, I'm a regular contributor to uh, introvertretreat.com, and it's a blog all about introversion. And there are four of us that contribute, and it's just different thoughts and, and concepts and articles and things like that. So there's, there's so many, really the possibilities are endless. Yes, Christine? You're saying that a blog can be like a journal, mm -hmm. but how long do you keep that journal? Like, it'll stay up there forever. But what about the, the memory capacity? Most of the, well, most of the blogging software will archive your things back after a certain amount of time. And I think that's pretty much configurable, depending on the software. Um, but as far as disk space, there's so much disk space now for the price. 
you know, what, what um, when we started um, hosting seven years ago, um, a megabyte was a very expensive amount of disk space. And now they're talking gigabytes in this space. So it, it's growing all the time, and, and the price per is coming down. So um, most blogs are either um, straight text or text with a lot of links to, links to other places, and text takes up very, very little space. So you could uh, you could feasibly have it going for years and years and years before you ever run out of space. But you were saying put on pictures? And, um, now the pictures, if, you, if you're going to do a lot of pictures and it is a concern if you don't have space, you can even post the pictures elsewhere and, and link to them and they will display in your blog even though the picture itself is on like Flickr or some of those free Lots photo sites. Sure. Lots of options. Getting around any limitations might be there. The other thing that I didn't mention, which because it's not really maybe that important to what I was saying, but when you post your different entries, you generally you're going to tag them with different categories. So that way, if you write about something today that's related to painting, I don't know, that's too general, um, to laser printers, I don't know, and Two years from now, somebody's interested in that. They can click on the tag, the category, and it'll bring up the entries related to that. So they don't have to go reading through everything and go back two years to find it. And they usually have a search feature too. It'll search all through all your entries for anything containing that phrase. So, so just as far as for your users, something to, to know. So to finish off, I'm just going to share three strategies for success when using a blog. First one is to update it at least two or three times a week if you can, if not as often as, as you reasonably can. Because if you're only posting once a month or less, then people are going to stop coming back because they'll, they go and it's like, I've already read this, I've already read this. So the purpose of a blog is so that you can continually be putting out some new information. The second thing is when you're writing your entries, keep in mind the keywords that people would use if they were searching, if they wanted to find you on a search engine, what kind of words would they use? And if you try and use those in what you're writing, that's going to help them find you. And the last thing is about ways of, of attracting people, and that is to read other blogs that are related to what you do or that would be of interest to other people are related to the same people that you're trying to attract. <coughs> Post your comments. You might even want to uh, link back to their blog. It's called Blog Rolling, and I don't know why, but um, when you have a list on your blog of other blogs that you read, that's your blog roll. And um, it just in increases the community and lets other people know that you're there. So there's an estimated 15 million active bloggers at the present time. So why not make it 15 million in one? <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with blogging, what's to stop people from spamming on someone's blog? Okay, um, some of the, there's different options and it depends what uh, software, what platform you're using. Some of them have, when you're posting the comment, you have to uh, put in, it's called CAPTCHA, and you've probably seen it, where it's, before you can hit submit, you have to type in the letters that are shown here. So that's one way of, of stopping it. Another thing you can do is set it so none of the comments show up unless you approve them. But if you're getting a lot, that could be, that's work. Uh, I know that that one of them has a spam filter, and if you go into your control panel, it says these these comments are being held. We think they're spam, and you look at them and bye. I'm sorry, I'm That's okay. Find the news. <laughs> and and then you can just delete them, or you can say no, this one's not spam. But usually they are. Yeah, so it walks like spam, talks like spam. 
so if you don't have any kind of um, filter where you have to go in and, and say, okay, I'll take this comment, if you just have them coming up on your computer or going into your blog, and there was, say, a really awful comment about something, you can just delete it. You can it. delete it. Yes. Okay. And another option, actually, the one that I'm using, I have it set to allow all the comments, and I haven't had any problems. But uh, one of the options is the first time a person posts, it has to be moderated. You have to approve it. But once you've approved them, then that person's comments will automatically appear. Okay. So that's a good feature, too. Because if you have a person who's reading all the time, you don't want to have to moderate all their comments. My, my, my other question is, I didn't know anything about blogging until I saw the email come through from Marie, and then I started checking into it. I thought it was for teenage girls to trash their friends or something. Right. And I noticed that there's, there's a lot of companies that really are using it, and they were saying it's been doubling um, every five months for the past goodness knows how many years. But, uh, and where was I going with this? It's still early for me. Um, oh, I was, um, a, a concern to me is, of course, copyright infringement. Is there any kind of problem if you um, want to refer to another article or, uh, you know, a beautiful picture you've seen, putting that into your blog? Well, that's why I said, if it's an article that you like, that someone's mm -hmm. written, often they'll say you can use this on your site as long as you link back, in which case you can take the whole thing and as long as you follow their guidelines. But if it doesn't say that, if you just link yeah, most to don't. the original yeah. where it's located, then you should be okay. I mean, most people would be very happy I to would have a think link back so. to them. Yeah. Now, a picture, if you were to link to someone's picture and have it display on your, your blog, I think they might take exception to that. Okay, because this is what I have been seeing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because in that case, they're not getting registered user to post to a blog. Okay. So if you have one, usually it's, most blogs is one person that runs it. But if you want to add other authors, like for the one where there's four of us, a lady emailed me and she said, would you like to be a contributor? So I said, sure. So she added me and I have my own username and password to log in. But only the people that she's given you can use the passwords can do that. Now as far as posting comments, you can usually do that anywhere, though some of them you have to sign up to even leave comments, and I guess that's how they do it. Okay. But I think they also lose out because a lot of people don't want to bother signing up just to post a comment, and they'll just go, oh, never mind. I have anything to say that important. Okay. 